am in the house is Evangel Show Yo Yvette, and <laughs> I bad. am on Willie H. They call me DJ Slack. You call me to get your praise Amen. party on. Yes. All right, on the phone line, right. we got G A. Yes, we're so excited. We were we looking for you. Glad to, to have yeah. him. We we What's was going looking. On? For, we was looking for. A to him last week is actually John Peters Jr. A.K. Grateful Anointed. Yeah, y'all can find him at www.twitter.com. G A John John. Also find him at uh, ReverbNation.com. Great. What is Grateful Anointed? Mm -hmm. So in the house is my man G A. What's up, G A? What's going on? What's going on, man? God bless. How's everybody doing? Oh, we Man, we good. feeling good around here. We are feeling excellent. We just had some dinner. Willie just finished cooking up in the peas. Oh, I know. That's right. Oh, my God. We got the mac and cheese going on. Man, we got everything going on. We got some healthy stuff going on, you know, but we having a good old time over here having dinner. So, G.A., what's sure. going on with you? We want to find out who are you. It says here that you are a, you do Christian music, gospel, gospel, hip-hop. You're from the Bronx. Uh, you're ranked number 23 on uh, Reverb Nation. You do a lot of music. And dance and hip hop and just everything. Tell us yeah. who is GA? Oh, uh, GA is first, you know, let's say GA is a Christian hip hop rap artist, slash musician, producer, singer, songwriter. Uh, basically, anything you know that I put my mind to, you know, that's that's who I am. Uh, definitely a full full time Christian in ministry, you know, serving God all day and every day, and that's just you no. Know, that's my passion. That's my purpose. So how does music and God mix for you, especially being a young person? You know, what types of stereotypes do you run into? Do you run into anything where people are like, ah, he's just, you know, some local hip hop artist. You know, we don't want to hear that. Tell me, how does it work for you being in music and ministry? Well, as far as um, music and ministry, I um, started out playing the drums when I was two years old. Mm. Then what actually brought me to hip hop, I'm sure everybody is familiar with with these two groups, these two groups that really introduced me to hip hop from the time I was a kid to now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I, I know I'm, you know, a little, little young to know about this group, mm -hmm. but the main two groups that really introduced me to hip hop, I'm gonna have to say the East Coast family, Bell Biff DeVoe, and Another Bad Creation. You know it, uh, Bell, yes, Bell yes. Poison. <laughs> you was being <ABC>. poison. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. So, what was going on with that? With that era, you were just into what they were saying, the music, the feel, the genre. It was just the music with them, with them just being itself. And I remember a long time ago watching the the American Music Awards when Bell Biv DeVoe got their award from the Poison album, and what um what Michael Bivens was saying, you know, because at first they wasn't supposed to come to the award show. Dressed up in the jeans and the, the snapback caps and the sneakers and boots, they were supposed to have suits. Right. And at the time, you know, their manager was like, "Y'all guys just blowing your whole career. Y'all know y'all finished after this, man. Look how y'all dressed." But just by them, just by them winning that that award alone, and what Mike said, he said, "This just goes to show that that God could, you know, use anybody. You can be yourself, wear what you want to wear, do what you want to do, just as long as you don't disrespect nobody." And in the meantime, in between time, keep God first and keep Him in all that you do. Yeah, my, me myself, I remember that as being a time where, um, and I always like the combination of R and B and hip hop, mm -hmm. and I think they did that well. I think they started yeah. out that out well. They were the epitome of blending the hip hop thing and the R and B. So they and they had the look. Right. They had the energy. They had, you know, they they had it, and they related to that audience. So mm -hmm. and they then, were and right on time because they were adults. You know, yeah. people from you know a variety of cultures and backgrounds who really were inspired by these young men who were you know giving positive music out there so that people could listen to something and enjoy themselves. And you know, it wasn't about gang banging and shooting. It was just let's have a good time and have some fun. Now, even though we know that their music wasn't Christian music, what persuaded you to be a Christian artist, and by the way, we commend you. Well, I was in, in, in 2000, 2004, I got introduced to a gospel label called Edify Records, where I started off as a producer. I was 18 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's when I was living in Maryland with my dad, then I, then I relocated back to New York, mm -hmm. and got introduced to a company called Christians in the Hood. Mm -hmm. 
And this is where I was a former member of AOC. It was six young men. It was myself and five other young men. Um, the group had split it up because of like, you know, lifestyle that was living amongst the other members. One member was selling drugs, you know, who just really, you know, turned down the body of Christ. Yeah. And the other young man, he became homosexual. Wow. So when then myself, I was lost. I was like, okay, now, you know, Christians in the hood were done. Now, right. what am I going to do? Where am I going to, you know, what what's, what's next for me? Right. And then I got, and then I got, um, and I got prophesied by the pastor. He was like, you know, you know, you are grateful for your life, and your gifts are anointed. So around the time when I was, you know, he was hanging out outside of outside of a McDonald's. And then I was like, I'm just very grateful for the anointing that I had all my life. Mm-hmm. So they're like, well, what you days like if you had a stage name, what would you go by? So at the time, I was going, you know, by JP2, John Peter II. So I was like, nah, that's a producer name. I was like, I need something, you know, unique. Right. Something crazy, you know. Yeah. Something, something that would fit my character. And then I was like, I'm very grateful for the gift. So I was like, why am I keep saying grateful? Why am I keep saying grateful? Mm. But then I was like, wait, hold up. So then I was like, everybody saying I'm anointed. And I was like, I know I'm anointed. And I said, wait, hold up. And I was like, whoa, pause, wait a minute. And I'm grateful and I'm anointed. So I spelled my name G-R-E-A-T. You know, because I put that in math because we all know that great is bigger than less. Right, right. Greater than, that's so, it. And I put, you know, I put the F through L. I took out one L, you know, and then put it as grateful. And I said, I'm anointed. And I was like, there it is. There you go, GA. Grateful anointed. That's my name. Wow, I love that. So GA's in the house now. Hey, GA, are we playing tracks behind you while you talk. So these are some of your tracks and really like your tracks. You sound... You sound very experienced. Um, he does. Very yeah. Well, he, you've been out since you say 2002. Well, he was with a group. Right. Now that group that you was with, they were they a great. They sound like they probably was a really good group if they had all stayed um, before the Lord. They you guys probably would have been big. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah we uh, we were supposed to have an audition with Sony Records, but wow. that's when all you know, all messed up. Do you feel that that was a blessing for you? You know, I hear a lot of people I mean, a lot of times talk about how we had this big deal that was supposed to come our way or, you know, we were supposed to have this great audition with this big producer, but it didn't happen. You know, God had another path for me. Do you feel that the path that God has led you down has truly been the most grateful path that you've ever been on? I think it was an awesome path. I think it was an awesome experience because the fact still remains, you know, God will let stuff happen in order to get in order to to get you where he wants you to be in life. Yeah. Well, so I really, you know, I really thank God for everything that he's done, you know, even though everything there has turned out great, but I really thank him for the opportunities that he's allowed me, you know, to do and to accomplish and even more doors of him opening up for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's been the most difficult challenge you've had with being an artist of any, um, you know, of any of the styles of music that you have or just being a musician? What's been most difficult for you? It was really most difficult when, you know, at the time when, you know, when I was with, um, when I was with my son's mother, um, it was a really hard time, you know, her accepting, you know, being, you know, a musician and as an artist, you know, for having her a hard time for her, you know, realizing that this, this is, this is a ministry, this is, you know, what I do. I I don't want to, you know, let God down into the ministry. So you know, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, it. You know, she, she, she's, she's a good person. You know, not speaking negative about her. I'm not. Right. I don't believe in speaking negative about anybody. That's right. But however, I do, I do believe in doing what God has told me to do. Well, we got um in the house. We get on the chat room. I don't know if you I'm in the ch- um HarlemLanesRadio dot com, but we're in the chat room. We got my man, um my brother. We got Kashani H, uh, my brother uh-huh. Ken of H. We got Sha Sha Sykes in the house. Tasha Harris, and of course me and um Cheryl's in the house. Um, so they very talented. Kashani called you very talented, and um we got the rest of the crew just checking you out. Checking out your music, we're playing that in the background. Now, hey, now I heard that you performed with um, Donnie McClurkin, and yeah. tell us, tell us some of the perform- some, some of the highlights, some of your uh, favorite performances, or you people that you've been working with. Wow, man. I, it was actually I was actually twelve years old 
when I was playing the drums for John and the Fox. Wow, 12 years old playing the drums. It was, a, it, was, it was a blessing. I was 12 years old. And last year, oh my God, when I tell you last year, on March, I had the opportunity to play the drums for Belvedere DeVoe. Right. Oh, you kidding me? What happened? Out of blues, man. Wow. Like, wow. How, did that, like, yo, How did that happen? How did that happen? I was like chill because I got, I actually, when it was one of the hookups that I got for an artist who I was playing keys for, I was playing keyboard. Right. So he was like, yo, the drummer had canceled out in the last minute because he got to go on tour and they, they, they looking for a drummer. So I was like, yo, I was like, well, who's the artist? And it's like, yo, the I said, stop playing with me. I said, stop playing with me. I was like, stop playing. Right. Like, Are you serious? And knowing that everybody knows I'm hands down, Bill Bill DeVoe and ABC, those are two artists that I look up to. Right. It was just, I was just excited, man. That was, that was crazy. I was like, wow. now, where did you guys go? Where did you go with them? Now, we, um, I, had to play, I had to play for them in Jersey. Oh, okay. So you were, you played for them in Jersey. Wow. So I mean, after you had the opportunity to meet with them and play with them, you know, um, did you guys get a chance to talk about the Lord at all? Did you get a chance to witness? Uh, I was, I was like nervous because I, I really wanted to jump around like a kid. That's all but right. I was, I'm, I was like, listen, I'm here to. I was like, I'm not gonna get into details. I'm not gonna tell right. them how I do artist work. I'm just here to play the drums. That's right. You know, I met them. I kept it real humble. Like right. professional, cause I wanted to make it seem like okay, I've been there, I've been right. there before. I met with the artists, they regular people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's all about you know business. You have to be business minded, not not child minded. Very nice. So I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to just like jump around. And say, oh my god, BBD, oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you Ron, were saying, oh my god. but you were saying that I, on the inside though, right? I was saying that on the phone with, with the <laughs> artist that told me that they need a drummer. Right, 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 right. So, what's one of your? What is your favorite song that you've made? The favorite, my favorite song that I made. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say "Be Real with God." What's that all about? So, "Be Real with God" is it's been too many. It's been, I've been in church all my life, and it's been too much of the same prophecies over and over again that's that's really stated by man and not by God. Where you know you have the preachers out there preaching about the same old thing over and over again. But yet, you know, you're, you're, you're lying in prophecy, and that's not what God told you. Mm-hmm. If God told you to minister and prophesy over somebody, you do it in God's timing, not your timing. Because, you know, you know, you know that's, that's giving false, that's giving false tongue. Mm-hmm. So I really, I really took that personal. I was like, you know what, man, I'm getting really sick of this. Because there's been a lot of preachers out there who I wanted to step to. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it the respectful humiliation way. And I'm going to put it in the rap song. And I just said, yo, be real with God. And everywhere I go to minister that song, people love that song. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just, I don't know what God was doing doing with me around that time. But he was doing something in the midst of me writing all those songs. And it's just, it's just about my lifestyle. You got to be real with God. You got to be real or don't be real at all. Because the time is running out and God is coming back real soon, so you gotta be real. You for God or you ain't for God. It's that simple. Absolutely. Now where do you see yourself creatively in the next five years? I see myself creatively still still doing what I'm doing, still ministering the gospel and Christian rap. Mm -hmm. I see myself on Walking through open doors, walking through the BET Awards, receiving Christian Hip Hop Awards, yeah. Grammy. Um, I see myself all over the place. Wow! Just doing, just doing, just doing the work of my father. Mm-hmm. That's it. Now, due to the fact that you have so many different things that you do, you know, I know that you produce, you write, you you, you rap. What's the, your favorite part of the yeah, of the artist? Favorite? Yeah, what's your favorite? Is it playing the drums, keyboard, producing? What's your favorite thing to yeah, do? What's your favorite? I might say drums and rapping. All right, drums and rapping, huh? All right. <laughs> now you said that you were playing the drums since you were two years old. Do you mean that someone was teaching you to play at two, or you picked up drums and you started banging at two and making beats? I actually used to sneak 